joke, one in a million. I've been trying for, oh, probably 40 years to find somebody. And I was going to go west because I heard there was a man out there that he liberated, helped liberate Dachau. I made all the arrangements and checked with the people out there and found out the man had died, so I didn't get to. I have went all over. A, a fellow come and told me his uncle was in on the liberation. And uh, I thought, oh, good. But then uh, I found out the uncle had died. This is <laughs> so unreal. Never thought it would ever happen. And you're saying town, too. I, I really gave up hope ever finding somebody. Boy, this is a day. Man, <laughs> thank you for what you did. <laughs> it's good seeing you. You get out of a prison camp. Boy, it was great. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, you bet. Man. Never thought it happened, you know. I've been looking 40 some years to find somebody. Boys end up, oh, the man died and everything. And when I found out you were still alive, I said, I'll do everything to try to meet this man, you mm -hmm. bet. Oh, boy. That takes back a long time. Boy, you ain't kidding. That's uh, about 60 years. Yeah, April the 29th, 1945. Yep. Yeah. About 58 that, years ago. That's a day I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. I went down and I enlisted to get in the army. And it wouldn't take me because it wasn't old enough. But they said, if your mother and father sign the paper, when you become 17, you can go in. So I took the paper back home and told my mom and dad, if you sign, they'll take me in now. And she said, I thought they'd wait. And I said, no, uh -uh, right now. And so, what I had done, I took my birth certificate and I scratched off the date and changed the date to make myself 17 years old. And when I took it back, the officer said, yeah, but you sure don't look like you're 17. Well, there's my birth certificate. That's the only thing I can go by. So they took me in and he asked me, well, what do you want? Do you want the Marines? No. You want the Navy? No. Air Force? No. Huh? Went all clear down. And he said, well, just what would you like to be in? I said, you got any openings in the Army, in the infantry? And you know what this major said? He said, we've taken in 50,000 men, but you're the first nut we ever got. To, <laughs> wanting to go in the infantry. And I thought, boy, I'm as good as my brother, I'll be in the infantry. And that's why I joined up. I never realizing what it was gonna be. But I'll tell you, after the first two weeks, boy, my life had changed an awful lot. I wished I had never changed my date on my birthday. <laughs> but it was too late then, yeah. Can I speak freely? Yes. Okay. War is plain hell. That's all I can say. It's, it's no fun. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who you're going to kill. You don't know when you're going to be killed or anything about it. 
It's an everyday struggle, especially when you get overseas. Oh, yeah. Your life will really change real fast. Yeah. Don't let nobody ever tell you war is nice. It is nothing. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. The first ones, first ones we seen come over the wall and see them come through the gate. So the only thing we knew, they were Americans and their patch looked like a bird, a red looking bird on their patch. Afterwards, afterwards, then we seen a Jeep and had these other soldiers in and they had a a rainbow on their shoulder, and we couldn't understand what it was all about, you know. It wasn't until years afterwards that we asked around, who were these guys? They had to be military infantry people come in, and we found out who they were. We didn't know, but I tell you one thing, uh, as skinny as we were, not having any food or anything, they liked to kill us because they gave us food and we started eating it and all of us started getting real bad sick. And uh officer said, don't feed them. Don't feed them people. And so, but that was the greatest day to get out of that camp. Oh, things went on there. You'll never find in a book. Uh, they know, know nothing, ever wrote down what went on in Dachau. Sure, there's a lot of uh, talk about other prison camps. I don't know, but I know what, how it was in Dachau. I tell you one thing, you learn how to pray because you don't know when you're going to die. When I were captured, the Germans opened fire on us. We didn't know it. We walked right into it. So we hit the ground and started firing back. And I'm laying there firing and reaching for my cans of ammo. And all of a sudden, I felt something in my back, poked my back. I thought it was a guy that was supposed to hand me ammunition, and I said, I got enough, quit poking me. And I was loading up, and all of a sudden, real hard something hit me in the back. And I just turned around like this, and I said, oh, ah and it was a German. And I was looking right down the barrel of his rifle. And what went through my mind is, how do you feel when you're shot with a bullet? I had no idea. And why he didn't shoot me? Ask the good Lord, I don't know. But he, made a motion with a rifle to get up. And uh, I got up, put my hands up. And from that day on, I, I become a prisoner of war. I had been on the front lines without relief for six and a half months. I had also been on the advance party for four months behind enemy lines. So I was a pretty well-hardened soldier when we reached Dachau. So we get to this building and we open the doors and the, there were stacks of bodies in there, singed, they had tossed torches, they sprayed them with gasoline and tossed torches in after them. These people had burned alive. Well, we saw a few other things and I had a complete lapse of memory. That's how bad it was. 
I couldn't remember. I can remember vaguely of going through the barracks and they always had distemper or uh, it was dysentery and, dysentery and Nobody. smallpox and you, you uh, name it, they had it. So we didn't want to go in and touch these people. That was one of the reasons I forgot. I wanted to help them, but I didn't want to get near them. And that's one of the reasons I forgot what happened that afternoon. That's what uh, death does to you. Your, your mind finally kicks in and tries to protect you. I faced fear right in the face. I didn't know what it was, you see. And I was uh, indestructible at that age. And I was in a tank, you see. And we were being strafed. And we piled out of the tank for some reason or other. And I followed this guy to a ditch. And he was shaken with fear. And I'd never seen fear before. And that's catching. If you, if you stay around it, I left that guy. I didn't want to feel like he was feeling. So that was the closest I ever came with stark fear. It, it, it had immobilized this guy. He was totally uh, unable to move. And I, didn't, I could feel it, a little bit of it. And so I moved on down the ditch a little bit and I felt better that way. When you're only 18 years old, he sticks with you every day. I thought maybe someday he would get over it. No, uh, can't. It's there. I'll go to the rest of my life. What we're like, I can tell you, I was there. But, uh, people, I'd like you to understand that uh, you're talking to frontline soldiers. If you spent six months on the front line or in the prison camp, there's only two people that come out of that, either the dead or the deranged. So we're, I still have uh, nightmares after all these years. He still feels it too. So war's not good, not for the soldier that does the fighting. And there's a lot of civilians that uh, suffer like this too. Yeah, I got advice for you. I don't know how, I don't know how you believe in the good Lord, but to get a Bible, read it, carry it with you, and pray. Because that's the only thing that kept me going. That keeps me going today. Believe. You have to have something to believe in. If you don't, you're lost. You fight the good fight. You fight, you take the side of right over wrong. Make sure that people don't uh, uh, fool you because we all know the difference between right and wrong. And if you fight the good fight, where you can make a difference, then that makes war less possible. A lot of people won't stand up for the right. They're afraid to buck society or, or their peers or whatever. But you know what's right and wrong. Don't be afraid to say it.